Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. Alto saxophonist Grace Kelly is performing for the very first time tonight here at the Jazz Standard. She's performing selections off her latest CD, which she recorded with the legendary Phil Woods, the man with the hat. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of alto saxophonist and vocalist Grace Kelly. <laughs> A very 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 nice CD in fact it, you're paired up with the legendary Phil Woods how did you guys hook up well it was four years ago I was 14 that I went to the Stanford Jazz Resident program in uh, Stanford California and I went as a student and I actually went because I saw Phil Woods was teaching and he's been an inspiration and idol of mine since I started saxophone which was at 10 so I went and um, Stanford always has an incredible lineup and Cedar Walton ended up being my ensemble coach and our ensemble was before Phil's so every time Phil would come early and sit and watch our ensemble before his so I got to know him throughout the week it was only a week-long program and he said a lot of really encouraging things to me and uh, it was when he came to Pittsfield Massachusetts the following September that I went to see him and before the show you know, I went to say hi. He was like, hey, Grace, good to see you. And I had given him a few of my discs. And he had actually listened, you know. And he was like, come jam with us. Do you have your horn? And I happened to have my horn in the car. So he invited me up on I'll Remember April. And uh, after my solo, he took off his legendary cap. And he put it on my head. And after my solo, I tried to give it back to him. And he was like, no, I'll keep it. It looks, it looks good. And this is the leather cap that he's worn on, like, all the record you know, on the records, and you look at it, it's amazing because it's really well worn. So I wrote this song, Man with a Hat, as a tribute to Phil. And um, we did another project together. My band was on the Jazz Cruise, um, one of the, you know, big, big lines. We were in a bunch of islands, and Phil was a special guest with the band. And it was there that one of the audience members said, You have to record with him. Like, you guys should really do a recording. And I don't know why I hadn't even thought of it so I, I asked him would you even be willing to do it and he's he was really enthusiastic said yeah let's do it so the record date happened and I was thinking of people I wanted on the CD I thought of you know Phil and Bill Goodwin because Bill's been Phil's drummer for 25 years Evan is my bass player in the band and the first name that popped into my head was Monty Alexander for piano and I had heard Monty originally on those Ray Brown recordings playing piano and I had met him at the Lionel Hampton Jazz Festival a few years ago, but we had never played together. So we called him up, you know, and, and he was really into doing it. When the session came together, it was one of those really magical things, like all the tunes, arrangements took off. We did like one, maybe two takes, tops of tunes. And uh, now we just had a show at Scullers on Friday night in Boston to two sold-out crowds playing the music of the, the CD. And uh, tonight is my band at the Jazz Standard.
Who got you exposed to the saxophone? Stan Getz. My my mom and my dad were listening to lots of Stan Getz, and uh, he was the only saxophonist that was playing in the house, and I completely fell in love with the sound of the saxophone. And to me, that was the only sound that I heard, you know, and it was so gorgeous. So um, in fourth grade, we all get to pick an instrument, and I pick clarinet, because for some reason you can't pick saxophone. You have to play clarinet, and then they, like, promote you to saxophone in fifth grade. So... I started clarinet, and I was really bad at it. It was painful. It was squeaking. Nobody wanted to hear me practice. I didn't want to. I don't really think I practiced. And um, so I, I decided I wanted to start saxophone on my own. I couldn't wait for school. So I started privately, and my piano teacher at that time, James Miranda, was also a really brilliant saxophonist. So I brought in the horn, and we did 30 minutes piano, 30 minutes alto. And the first time... I played it. I got a really warm, beautiful sound. It was completely different than the clarinet. And six weeks after I started, I was playing songs like Besame Mucho and My Funny Valentine because I already knew them in my ear from listening to like Sinatra and stuff. So I just learned them, learned the fingerings with my teacher, and he taught me a lot of stuff by ear. What was it that really kind of was like, okay... I really have to start playing the saxophone. Because y'all know you started off playing piano also, but you kind of were like, nah, saxophone's where it's at. Well, I think when I realized it happened pretty quickly that practicing was fun and it was not like an annoying task that my mom was telling me to do is when I realized that I actually, I loved it. You know, I was staying up to like 11 and 12 at night, my parents had to tell me to go to bed because I was having so much fun, like, fiddling around. And it was also the fact that it was easy enough for me. Like, it came naturally having, you know, being able to play the horn felt natural. Sometimes certain instruments link with certain people, and I think it's just about finding the right pairing. And this is the right pair for me. For some reason, I felt drawn to it, and um, I picked it up. And I like the fact that it wasn't like clarinet, where I was really struggling And uh, it was a challenge for me, but I always enjoyed the sounds that came out. sing people time and gone on the disc that's another layer of your musicianship and i guess your talents and i want to know how you chose these songs and how comfortable do you feel singing now more and more that you are recording and advancing as an artist now well it's been a really interesting amazing journey for me because i've been singing ever since i could talk And when I was little, I wanted to become a Broadway artist. I was listening to lots of Broadway music, Frank Sinatra, the American Songbook. 
So when I started playing saxophone at 10, it's the first time that I really like got into jazz. And I always listened to people like Billie Holiday and Ella and Sarah Vaughan, and they were new voices to me. And the thing about playing and singing that's been really fascinating is when I first picked up my horn, people would always make comments like, wow, you sound 40 years older than you are, and like the sound and your tone. Meanwhile, I'm like a 12-year-old singer, and my voice is like really high. And every year, my voice keeps changing, so I can hear on the discs. I've recorded one every year, and that's been a really big thing that's been changing and continues to change as well. So I've been almost playing catch-up, you know what I mean? But more and more, I've been feeling more comfortable singing, and I'm just trying to do it more. So it gets to a really fluid point, just like playing... And I love having these two voices, being able to play and express through the horn, being able to sing with words and um, write songs. I, uh, <clears throat> I wrote Gone. I was listening to lots of Brazilian music. I was listening to lots of Joe Beam and, and uh, Ellis Regine. And uh, I sat down at the piano and started coming up with these chords that were very similar to those type of songs. And... I had words that kind of came out, sketched them out. I actually worked with a lyricist on this one, David Greenberg, and the two of us tweaked the words together. And it ended up kind of being like a heartbreak love song, which is a little ironic because the melody sounds happy. Um, and People Time is actually, it's really interesting. This is a Benny Carter tune, so Phil and I decided to do it in tribute to Benny Carter. And Phil emailed me and said, check out these words. And I looked and I looked and I couldn't find a singer who had recorded the words. And it turns out that um, Deborah Pearl, who's a singer and lyricist, had written the words to this song and nobody had ever recorded them. And Phil had had them because it's kind of a back backstage thing that, you know, um, Benny Carter's wife gave permission for her to, to put it out there publicly. So I'm really honored to have the first recording of that song with words and they're really beautiful she did a fantastic job and I think she's continuing to do a few other Benny's tunes and writing lyrics to them because Benny Carter used to write lyrics to his own songs and play them play trumpet on them too so uh, that's how that one came <laughs> do it again for another edition of the Pace Report reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Grace Kelly for her time as well as the staff and management here at the Jazz Standard. As always, please visit my website www.thepacereport.com for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace. <laughs>